Hey guys, it's Greg Jones for Engine Builder. We've been spending the day in Weatherford, Texas today. And uh, as you can tell with the cool logo behind me, we popped into Frankenstein Engine Dynamics. I'm joined by Jesse Mayer. Jesse, uh, you're a senior product engineer designer. That's correct. I probably mixed up words there. Ah, close enough. Close enough. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's just a title. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm just the guy responsible for uh, taking a lot of our concepts uh, from the design phase to modeling to CNC programming and prototyping. Yeah. So guys, you know, I'm super excited to check out Frankenstein because as many of you know, they make some badass cylinder heads, badass intakes, uh, a ton of awesome products. And Jesse's behind that. And uh, he's been kind enough to uh, take a few minutes to tour us around the shop. So let's go. Let's uh, follow Jesse and let's uh, do it. Check Come it on, out. guys. So yeah, you got a pretty cool lobby here. Bunch of customer uh, yeah, kind pictures. Yeah, kind of the greatest hits. Um, yeah. You know, we're, we're proud of all of our customers. They're part of our team, they're part of our family. Yeah. Uh, we can't grow without them. Absolutely. So we try to give them the love that they give us at the same time. Absolutely. Um, this is kind of just our main office area in here. Okay. Uh, this is my cave where I nice. operate most of the time. Uh, You'll have to excuse the chaos, but to be fair, when things are clean, I can't seem to get anything done. I need uh, chaos yeah. and stuff scattered all about. But, um, sure. you know, we have a little bit of everything going on here. We're doing some R&D on the new Harley-Davidson engines. Um, we've got some McLaren stuff here. we got some uh, Porsche GT3 heads. Um, oh, wow. Uh, honestly, a little bit of everything. If it goes suck, squish, bang, blow, you know, we deal with it. Yeah. Um, you know, most guys kind of get, or most shops kind of get uh, pigeonholed into one sort of department. And... And while we do put a, a majority of our effort into the LS and LT side of things, um, you know, it really doesn't stop there for us. Sure. We, we kind of tackle a little bit of everything. Sure. Keeps it fun. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this is where I'll, uh, you know, reverse engineer stuff, um, do the CAD design and the programming, and then um, I'll take you guys out to the shop and show you where the real work happens. Yeah. So in here is where we do a lot of the manual operations. We've got uh, two new and seat and guide machines uh, that handle all of our valve jobs. That's where really a lot of the magic in, in some of these cylinder heads comes from. Yeah. Um, the port doesn't really matter much if you can't uh, have the valve job to tie it all together. Yeah. Um, we do the, the surfacing, we pressure check all of our cylinder heads. Um, back there is just kind of a mess. That's where we kind of tear down, clean, process all the stuff that comes in. Um, you know, we work with everything from brand new castings to 50 year old OEM stuff. You never know what really rolls in the door. Right, right. We try to tackle a little bit of everything. Yeah. And then out here on this floor, we have uh, two. We have two of our large five-axis CNCs. Um, they're responsible for most of our, our billet products that we do. And then we also have uh, two five-axis centroids that we use exclusively for the cylinder head porting. Okay. Um, but when it comes to the cylinder heads, all the magic actually really starts in this room. Uh, this is a room where we do all the hand ported designs. Now, while we, uh, we do use um, CFD and other computer aided you know, uh, packages to, to help us with some of our designs, but um, between Chris Frank, the, the president owner, and um, Brad Hall, um, those two combined have like 70 or 80 years of experience. Um, and so really most of our port designs start with a hand ground cylinder head and then once they're happy with it, it flows right, everything looks good, then they hand it off to me where I digitize it, turn it into a computer model and spit out something our machines can reproduce. Yeah, awesome. So you got a couple of Mazaks here, like... We do. What, and so you mentioned the Centroids are just doing cylinder head stuff. What are the Mazaks doing? Um, so the Mazax are responsible for most of our billet products. Okay. Um, fantastic machines, giant powerhouses. Yeah. But here's an example of a, a set of uh, short runners for a, a high RPM, big block, um, custom engine. So we built a lot of our we built a lot of our products in a modular stance. So here's the valley tray that goes with this. This particular product is called our Apophis. Yeah. And so we make um, everything from the runners to the lids. And they all come off the machine, yeah. no hand finishing. 
just cleaned up, straightened the box, and ready to go. Yeah, yeah, it's gorgeous. Um, and so that's primarily what they do. Uh, they're right now in the middle of making a batch of our low pro manifolds. Uh, that's one of our more popular designs. It's small, it fits in everything, um, and uh, runs for. We have applications from small block Chevy to small block Ford to LS and LT, and again, that modular platform allows us to uh, you know do that with with one kind of package. Yeah. Uh, this one, unfortunately, is down for maintenance at the moment. Okay. Um, but she'll be back up and running, spitting chips in no time. Yeah. So that's just raw material there. Yep, yeah, raw material. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't even tell you how many thousands of pound of billet we oh, process in a, in a given week. Yeah. Um, but uh, we have a, a giant dumpster out there just full of shavings ready for recycling and then we'll start the process all over again. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to the cylinder heads themselves and the porting, these two machines are really our workhorses. Uh, they're both full five axis machines um, made by Centroid and they tackle all the five axis porting. Um, there's really, we've struggled to find something better for the job and these two have treated us well. Uh, this was actually the first machine. Uh, this funny story, this machine is actually how I ended up in the state of Texas. Uh, I used to work for Centroid as an applications engineer yeah. when Chris originally bought this machine. And then through a weird twist of, uh, uh, twist of fate, um, I uh, was sort of looking for a new challenge and my wife's company was bought and moved out to San Francisco and we were both kind of looking for a fresh start. So I called Chris one day and I said, hey, um, so bad news, um, I I'm, I'm think I'm going to be done at Centroid. Um, and I was at that point, I was really helping him a lot, kind of get off the ground and get new product lines developed and things like that. Yeah. I said, but on the bright side, I'm available for hire. And uh, 10 years as of last month, um, well, I've been here and it's been great ever since. Congrats. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. So here we got some LT heads, we've got some standard LS. Yeah. Uh, here are some Gen 3 Hemi heads in line ready to go. Um, this is of course our, our flagship product here, our F-Series cylinder heads. Yeah, yeah, we've and, written, written about those, yeah. Yep, and we, uh, we have those in a number of different varieties. Um, and they, they start life over here on uh, this other Mazak. Okay. I don't know if anything's in there at the moment. No, unfortunately it's empty at the moment. Okay. Um, but basically the castings come in as a raw casting. They get cubed here. They get a secondary operation on uh, one of the three Mazaks for push rod holes, spark plugs, uh, things that require compound angles. Um, and then they get their, their finished porting on the centroid and then valve job and out they go. Yeah. So we, we tackle cool. that all right here in house. Now, Jesse, how many square feet do you guys have total? I have absolutely no idea. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I really don't even know. Yeah, I mean, uh, this, this it, is an impressive side of the business. We're, we're about to walk into even bigger. We area. are, and it just kind of keeps going. Um, yeah. they, they, everybody kind of made fun of me at one point because there'd be days that I'd walk out and there'd be a new addition to the building, and I was like, where the hell did that come from? Yeah. For real. When we originally started, it was about half that office over there and just this room. Yeah. So everything else you see has been an addition since 2016. Okay, yeah, uh, We've awesome. continued to grow tremendously every year and um, yeah. well, the year's been pretty kind to us so far. Uh, this is our, our third uh, uh, Mazak Variaxis. Yeah. Um, this is where a lot of the uh, secondary processing happens on the F-Series and a lot of miscellaneous stuff. Whether we be building, um, here's a, as an example, here's a, a billet, uh, billet uh, dual 105 millimeter throttle body that we make in house. Um, we do these mostly for um, the uh, Hemi Pro mods. Okay. And then we also make throttle bodies for a lot of Harley stuff and, and some other applications. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Jesse, while we while we're in a little bit of a co more quiet yeah. area than that initial shop space, talk about uh, how long it takes to go from that raw material to a finished product. Like what's What's a product that's on the quickest side, and then what's a product, I'm sure some of the full cylinder heads take a little while. Uh, they do. Um, so, you know, the, the quickest stuff we do is probably the OEM porter. Okay. Somebody sends in a set of heads, uh, they go down, they go through tear down and clean, they get fully inspected, make sure everything's all right, uh, and then they're run through the machine, um, you know, two to three hours maybe per cylinder head, okay. uh, you know, to fully, fully remachine the heads. Yep. And then from there, they're gonna go over to the valve job, um, so we're, you know, you're, you're probably looking at maybe uh, two, three, maybe, you know, six to eight hours worth of effort going into a, uh, uh, an OEM set yep. of cylinder heads that we're just kind of porting and opening up. Yep. Um, 
all the way to you know our F series, where our F series are going to have uh, an initial cubing operation in this machine, and then they'll go over there, and it's about maybe two hours plus per head uh, to get initially cubed. Then there's another hour to get spark plugs, push rods, uh, get yeah. all the ends machined. Um, and then from there, they're three to four hours a piece, um, the porting. You know, they start with a tiny little port, so there's a lot of material right. to kind of pull out of there. Um, then, you know, after that, you know, you add another hour or two for valve job. There's a couple secondary steps in between where we'll, we pressure check all the castings at various steps along the way. Um, we inspect all the valve seats. We inspect kind of everything along the way, yeah. um, just to make sure you know we, we catch any issues as fast as we can. Um, QC is something that uh, you know is ever evolving. Yeah. Um, so we, we try to stay on on top of that, um, as well as new manufacturing methods and whatnot. Oh sure. Um, sure. Uh, so yeah, that's probably an example of that. Now okay. you get into long run products, then we start talking about some of the big billet stuff. Uh, some of our big billet manifolds, we may start with, um, we may start with, you know, six, seven hundred pounds worth of raw billet, and it may be 40 hours of machining to, right. you know, whittle it down to a 20 to 30 pound complete intake manifold. Yeah. yeah. In, you know, one piece, multiple pieces, it, you know, depends on how it goes, but. Sure. That's um, crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we store all of our billet over here for all of our various products. Yeah. Um, so it comes in mostly to size and. Um, over here is a rack of all of our F-Series castings, fresh, okay. in, fresh in from the foundry, you know, ready to have all their initial operations. Yeah. Uh, they're cast here in the U.S. and they're 100% machined right here in-house. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And Jesse, you were also saying you were employee number one. I was. Uh, how many employees are Frankenstein to that? Uh, right now we're in like the mid-20s in, okay. in employees. Yeah, Yep. nice. Yeah, we've got a we've got a good stable sized crew. Um, you know, everybody's yeah. really fantastic. Everybody works well together. We often wear a lot of hats. I'm sure. Uh, but um, that's just what we need to do. Yeah. You know, we're, we're, cool. we're just, everybody's a part of the Fed family. You know, everybody believes in what we're doing and uh, what we're trying to achieve. And yeah. you know, our customers do as well. And as long as that carries on, well, the future looks pretty bright. Yeah, you're you're rocking and rolling. Yeah. Um, over here. We have our uh, engine building room okay. and dyno. Yeah. It's, uh, well, currently just has a giant bike in here. Uh, nice. Again, you know, we, we do a lot of R&D for um, Harley-Davidson. This is one of their brand new bikes. So we're developing, cool. we're developing cylinder head ports for multiple different stages. We're developing billet intake manifolds, billet throttle bodies, as well as uh, billet air cleaners. Yeah. So that's kind of what we're doing here. And then the dyno in here, Oh, this is cool. Yeah. So we do have a, a full in-house engine dyno here. Wow. Uh, it's a custom Superflow unit. I think it's good for about 6,000 horsepower. Um, we wow. built this so we could cover everything from street cars all the way up to the big pro mods. Yeah. 6,000 horsepower. That's pretty serious. It's a little scary at times. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm sure this is all bulletproof. It is. And, it, yeah. Oh, it, it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, we always kind of joke, you know, what the weather in Texas is like, right? So everybody's huddling in here when a to right. tornado comes right. through. Yeah, hey, good call. Yeah. And, uh, awesome the, artwork there, too, yeah. Yeah, I wish I could remember the gentleman's name. He did some custom artwork on some of our garage doors as, as well as the mural in here. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's been pretty good. We've got, um, there's an LT. Um, mule motor we have there. Mm -hmm. There's our LS mule motor. It's kind of hidden up. Yeah. We, uh, we generally get this all fired up and running. Every time we develop a new cylinder head, we run it through its paces here. We look yeah. at the valve train. We look at the power. Um, we compare it versus, you know, we test different intake manifolds. Um, you know, whatever, whatever we can do. Yeah. You know, we rely on our customers a lot for, for R&D, you know, because there's, there's always a big separation between what happens on a dyno, what right. happens on a flow bench versus actually going down the track. Absolutely. So, you know, at the end of the day, that's the only thing that really matters. But, um, you know, we make sure we got a pretty good fighting chance before things go out the door for the first time. I'm sure you do. That's awesome. And then uh, right in through here, uh, it's just kind of our manual machining station. So a lot of times, you know, just to do quick little parts, prototype things, just a couple manual lays, bridge port, um, welding. Um, you know, we've got a lot of different we got a lot of different product lines uh, and a lot of OEM heads that require, you know, some, some welding to process, things like that. So we, yeah. we, do, we do that in here. We, we try to tackle as much as we can in-house. Can't always get it all, but we certainly give it a try. Yeah. And then um, oh, there's an odd random uh, BMW cylinder head. Yeah. That's actually what I race. Okay. Yeah, those, I mean, those are pretty popular. Though. Yeah. Uh, and then one of the final steps before we go is we've got our, our laser engraver. So everything is, you know, serialized and 
uh, logoed if necessary. And, all right, so this is what's putting on uh, it is. these designs there? Okay. Yep. Yep, and this is really the last step before it goes over to these guys over here. And um, so once everything's all machined, it's checked out, it's QC'd, lasered, then it's just ready for final assembly and out the door we go. So these are all various heads uh, just waiting in line to, uh, to get the, their, their final assembly and, and, and go. Um, tipping all the valves, checking all the installed heights. Um, we uh, pressure test each cylinder, make sure the valve job's good. And yeah. so we just think again, multiple, multiple QC steps along the way. Um, so, you know, we try to catch everything before it goes out in the yeah. wall. And so from just kind of like your standard cylinder head to having some actual components in it, do you guys send them to customers with anything else besides just the cylinder head? Most of our cylinder head packages are complete. Okay. Um, probably the vast majority of them go out complete. Okay. Uh, we have our own we have our own custom spring kits and tie retainers uh, that we have different kits for different applications, different lifts, things like that. Uh, yeah. That's what Jose over here is working on right now is putting together a set yeah. of our, our uh, Monster Series 311s. Okay. And um, so again, he's uh, installing the installing the guides, uh, installing the seals, yep. uh, tipping all the valves, making sure all the installed heights are where we want it, shimming everything is necessary for a given lift, given spring kit. Yeah. Uh, and then they'll, again, they'll be vacuum checked every single cylinder uh, before they get packaged up in a box. Awesome. And then, Jesse, do you happen to know some of the production numbers in terms of you know how many heads you guys are getting through in a given week and, and sending uh, out? You know, I honestly don't. Yeah, just, no, just be a guess. I, yeah, yeah I, I honestly don't. You know, again, is I mean, as, it looks like you're doing a pretty good volume. It, it is. We, we've we got a lot of product going through here year in and year out. Um, yeah. But again, you know, most of the time I spend my days in my little engineering cave, and so I, I don't. I don't always yeah. stay on top of, you know, how Stuff's much happening moving. around you, right? <laughs> right. All, all I know is I got a long list of projects. I'm trying to spit out a bunch of new products, uh, you know, meet everybody's needs. And uh, so I sometimes I miss some of the bigger pictures. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. You, you mentioned a couple of the other products that you're working on, like the Harley stuff. You had mm -hmm. the Porsche uh, head in there as well as some McLaren things. You know, what else is Frankenstein starting to delve into? You know, um, without well, without getting too far ahead of yourself. Or? Yeah, I, I can't let out all the secrets. We yeah. do we do have two new products. Um, we do have two new cylinder heads that are in the works, uh, which I can't really talk about right now. Okay. Uh, we're ironing out the details, so we keep is it, it is it domestic? Can you say uh, that? It is it is domestic. Okay. It is in fact domestic. Okay. Um, so yeah, definitely uh, keep an eye out on our social media and, and things like that in the yeah. in the near future, next month or two. We, we expect to have some big developments. Um, we're working on a, a brand new uh, ProMod engine platform. Um, that's uh, going to be kind of exciting down the road. We're, we're trying to take a very different twist on that. So um, uh, we'd look for that maybe towards the end of the year. We might have something kind of exciting there. Nice. Um, that's, uh, that's probably about it for now. Um, I mean, we have, uh, we're, we're, we're doing kind of a refresh of some of our intake manifolds. Um, you know, it's funny when we design some of these things, or I should say it's funny how the industry has changed, right? You know, uh, 10 years ago when I got here, you know, eight, 900 horsepower was, you know, this was crazy, insane power, right? Yeah, yeah. And then next thing you know, it was like nobody was interested unless it was a thousand horsepower car. Well, now your mom's minivan is a thousand horsepower and you can buy that shit off the lot. Yeah. So, uh, you know, now we've got customers pushing traditional LS cylinder heads. Uh, we had a customer a couple months ago make almost 3,000 horsepower right. uh, to the wheels. Yeah. And so it's just an insane amount of power. So it just forces us to, you know, kind of revisit some of the old things, make yeah. sure they can keep up with the current demands and, and the extreme conditions that some of these guys are putting them in. So, uh, you know, a lot of times it's not always super sexy, you know, just refreshing some old stuff, but it's how we keep up and stay on top of our customers and stay on top of the industry. Yeah, no, for sure. The, the bar is definitely, it keeps going I up. It continually gets raised, yes, yeah. at, a, at a shocking rate. It, it <laughs> kind of makes me wonder when, you know. Well, and you're the one helping do that, right? You're helping keep pace with the uh, uh, we, we try, we try. Yeah. And then again, you know, we, we try to keep, uh, you know, all the modern tools employed. You know, we, we use uh, FEA analysis uh, to look at uh, a lot of our, our intakes and our products, make sure they're structurally sound, make sure they can handle the insane boost level 
tools that our customers mm -hmm. are making these days. Yeah. Um, you know, we'll use uh, CFD to look at new new manifold designs, make sure uh, you know everything's being fed nice and evenly. You know, we get the kind of flow we want. Um, and then uh, you know, the most important step is is taking that and then getting data from customers, getting data from the flow bench, so we have that correlation between the simulation and reality. Yeah. Without that correlation, you're just hunting in the dark over here and spitting out numbers and they're kind of meaningless. Yeah. You know, it's easy to make pretty arrows on screen, but you know, it's, it's tying it all together that kind of makes it important. Um, so that's, a, that's kind of a big part of what we strive for and, and you know, I'm, what I'm involved with here. Yeah, yeah, um, And even, you know, silly little things, like, I, I shouldn't say silly little things, sorry. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, we, we try to come up with new innovative products. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a, a um, a uh, quick disconnect breather yeah. uh, system that we have fits in a standard dash 16 ORB port, standard on you know uh, most of your valve covers. Yeah. Um, so you know we, we try to provide accessories. Um, you know we'll make little accessories like uh, water crossover kits for traditional LS, as well as our F series, mm -hmm. which kind of has a unique watering system in it. Um, to valley trays, to valve covers, and different accessories. Uh, you know, so we, we try to be kind of a, a, a one-stop source for all of our customers best yeah. we can. Yeah, the catalog is growing. It is, yeah. every year. Every year, which keeps me busy. It's a yeah. good problem to have. Yeah. All right, so Jesse, it seems like we toured most of the facility here. Let us know if there's anything else that uh, is um, I, I can't. Off. I can't think of anything uh, real big. I, I wish I had, uh, you know, some, some cool new things running for you guys to see. Um, uh, just have to come back. Yeah, yeah. Well, pleasure. We would, we would love to. But Jesse, we appreciate the time. Thanks for showing us. Absolutely, around. you guys are always welcome. We'd love to have this you is, here. This is super cool. Uh, again, like I said, you guys make some awesome products, and you know I've seen them. A lot of engine builders are using them. A lot of customers are racing them, and uh, it's cool to see it. You know where it starts. So. Well, we've had a lot of success. We've got some great customers to to thank for that, and uh, you know a lot of hard work from everybody here, and we're gonna yeah. keep moving forward. Yeah. Well, guys, that does it for this shop tour of Frankenstein Engine Dynamics. Again, want to thank Jesse, and uh, make sure you guys are checking out everything that FED is doing. Uh, again, like I said, tons of cool stuff. If you have questions about what's going on here at Frankenstein, make sure to leave that down in the comments, and we'll pass that on. But also make sure you're checking out EngineBuilderMag.com for more great engine content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.